To blacklist or not to blacklist? That's the question of ruling conservatives in response to the Hamas terror attacks on Israel. President Trump posted to a social media platform, Truth Social, to argue, quote, What happened in Israel was barbaric. Now, American universities are allowing or enabling the open hatred against Israel and America. Instead of educating our young Americans, deans stand idly by, while subversive groups are calling for a national day of resistance. Not only is this anti-Semitic, it is also anti-American. Students have begged deans to throw these subversive groups off campus. We ban Nazis, ban communists. It is about time that we remove these anti-Semites from our schools, or is the cancel culture only used against conservatives? End quote. However, Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, who seems like he's going to be Trump's VP more than the nominee himself, is taking a somewhat different approach to a related question. So on Sunday, Ramaswamy posted to X, formerly known as Twitter, to say that while those college students who protested and signed letters in support of Hamas are what he calls simple fools, he also says, quote, it's not productive for companies to blacklist kids for being members of student groups that make dumb political statements on campus, end quote. So what do we do? We on the right finally have the political leverage to cancel in the same way the left has done for years, and this time against those who arguably actually deserve it. Because what is mercy without first showing justice, meaning punishing that which is bad? Mercy without justice is not mercy at all, but cowardice at best and enabling evil at worst. But on the other hand, would this be playing into a tit-for-tat scheme? While many radical college graduates have brought their dangerous ideals with them into the workplace, not all have, and some professionals today look back ashamed of movements and policies they once virulently supported. Joining us now to discuss this thorny issue and others is Josh Hammer, the senior editor at large for Newsweek. Josh, thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for having me. Great, so there is some back and forth about what should be done with those who've expressed open and active support for Hamas on college campuses. Should they lose jobs, be named shamed, blacklisted? What are some of your thoughts? Kara, I am all in on shaming, vowing not to hire. I mean, to me, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? I mean, the entire notion that there is such thing as neutral principles here, that there is such thing as mutually assured destruction, there is such thing as neutral rules. I, I, I mean, what world are these people living in? I mean, Vivek Ramaswamy in submitting as such, it basically, I think, is just showing us that he is really at his core a naive and, and quixotic and optimistic libertarian because only a libertarian could ever think that this is somehow a good idea at a time when the American left is viciously trying to cancel, trying to destroy anyone and everyone who comes forward with some sort of conservative opinion for simply positing that there is male and there is female and there is no blurring of these gender lines, for saying that the unborn child in the womb has inherent moral and human dignity and a right to life. Why in the world would we not try to reciprocate tit for tat, especially, especially when the underlying substantive issue here, I wanna be very clear about what the underlying substantive issue is that these 30 plus Harvard student groups affix their names to. They came out in support of the modern day Third Reich. They came out in support of the worst pogrom, the worst genocide of the Jewish people since Adolf Hitler was, a, was alive. They came out and they said that Israel was to blame, that Israel was to blame for this genocidal annihilationist pogrom that led to the burning and incinerating of Israeli children, to the wanton slaughter of Holocaust survivors, to the raping and pillaging and the subsequent murder of Israeli teenagers. These people are filthy, disgusting, scumbag animals, and I hope that, frankly, all of the business world vows not to hire them. I saw earlier today one federal judge say that he is not going to hire any law clerk in the future, someone who signed on to this. I want to see a lot more of where that comes from. I think it was the, the president of Harvard. It was a, a woman. She came out with a, a statement. She was trying to use free speech as kind of the, the cover. And it's funny because when it was conservatives on campus, like that just went out the window. But then it also begs the question, if we're talking about free speech, how can you exactly have free speech and open dialogue as you're saying with people who want to shoot you in the face? I mean, it's, how, are you gonna supposed, how are you supposed to get that one going? How are you supposed to get the ball moving on that one? Because the idea of free speech is not so that we can defend the most heinous and the, the, the most evil and disgusting, like you're saying, wanting to to kill and to maim, to genocide. That's not something that I want to, I don't want to go die on that hill.